Welcome dear children to yet another session of Sunday school. Hope you all had a lovely week and enjoyed doing all your assignments. Children, last Sunday we learned the lesson on how the disciples were on their way to Emmaus and they met Jesus as a stranger and recognized him only after the breaking of bread. So how is our relationship with Jesus? So children, now let us listen to the story of Father Joseph Waz. Uh, children, let us listen to the story, the incident in the life of Father Joseph Vaz, who went from India, Goa, as a missionary to Sri Lanka in the 18th century. Father Joseph Vaz went from India to Sri Lanka as a missionary priest because he had heard that the Catholics there were being persecuted. Catholic priests were not allowed to say Mass nor were the Catholics allowed to participate in one. The moment the Mass was celebrated, they would be identified as Catholics and persecuted. So Father Joseph Vaz had to use a clever trick. To get into, the, into Sri Lanka, he went there disguised as a coolie on a ship. But once he got there, he had to recognize who were the Catholics and how he could celebrate Mass with them without being found out. Because the moment they gathered to break bread together, they would be spotted as Catholics. So once again, he disguised as a beggar and went from house to house to observe the people's houses and their behaviors. Sometimes he went past, he even passed hints about mass and wait to see if people would understand what he was saying. Slowly, some of the people who were Catholics began to recognize him, not only as a Catholic, but as a priest. Then they got a little more friendly with him and asked him to prove that he is a priest. He showed them the pattern and the chalice he had managed to take from India. Finally, they believed he was a priest and protected him from being caught. They would gather for mass in the middle of the night. Well, children, a few questions to ponder on. Do you think that the chalice and the pattern were the clearest identification Father Joseph Vaz could give to show that he was a Catholic priest? And why do you think so? If you were present in Sri Lanka at that time and had to participate at the night mass hidden from the public view, would you think it was too much trouble? Well, children, ponder on these questions. When we see the second part of the stories of the disciple on the way to Emmaus, as the disciples came near the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going further. But they held him back saying, stay with us. The day is almost over and it's getting dark. So he went in to stay with them. He sat down to eat with them took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke the bread and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. But he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, wasn't it like a fire burning in us when he walked and talked with us and explained the scriptures to us? We see something marvelous happen at this point of the story. Till this moment, the disciples who were talking to the stranger had not recognized the stranger as Jesus. They thought he was only a good teacher who explained to them the scriptures. But when the stranger sat at table, said the blessings over the bread, broke it and gave it to them, they recognized him as Jesus. Exactly then he disappeared from the table. 
since he was truly the risen Lord. The disciples discovered the clue immediately, but as in the case of Father Joseph Vaz, who celebrates Mass was a clue. The moment the stranger broke bread, the disciple recalled the Last Supper that Jesus had at which he had broken bread and shared it around, as well as the cup that we shared. Saying this is his body and blood. He had also told the disciples to do it in memory of him. At Emmaus, he confirmed to them that every time this is done, he is the risen one, will always be there, though he cannot be seen. The second part of the Mass is called the Liturgy of the Eucharist. It begins with the preparation of gifts on the altar, namely bread, wine, as well as gifts for the poor. This is a great invitation for us never to go empty-handed for Mass. We always go with gifts. You will remember that sometimes mummy and daddy would place a few coins in your hands to drop it in the collection box. Now that you will be participating in the mass for the first time, you are challenged to think about how you are never going to come for mass empty handed. Through the gifts of bread, wine and offering for the poor, you will be bringing your whole self to the Eucharist as an offering. The priest then takes our offering and praises and blesses God for he is great. The Eucharistic prayer is a beautiful prayer of praise and consecration. At the end of it, the priest breaks the bread. Now become the body of Jesus and gives it like Jesus did for all to eat. Very soon you will be receiving Jesus' body for the first time. It is a challenge for you to always keep yourself worthy to eat the body of Jesus. That is why just before the priest places the host in your hand, he will say a few words and you will have to respond like, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. And we respond, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be healed. Whenever we truly make an offering of ourselves to God, through the offering of bread, wine, an offering for the poor, and worthily receive the body of Jesus in return, we maintain our relationship with the risen Lord, the Father and the Holy Spirit. That is why no Christians can stay away from Mass. The Catholics whom Father Joseph Vaz encountered had understood this very well. Having joined in the Song of the Angels in the Holy Holy, we then begin the great Eucharistic prayer, which is always addressed to the Father. Once we begin the Eucharistic prayer, we have the invocation of the Holy Spirit upon the gifts of bread and wine that we've placed on the altar. And this is important because we're calling down the Spirit of God on those gifts. They could hardly be more ordinary, gifts of bread and wine. 
And we're saying to God, breathe into these gifts to make them more than bread and wine. And the roots of that invocation of the Spirit are very, very deep. They take us way back to the beginning of the biblical story where God, we're told, picks up a lump of earth, good rich soil, and then breathes his breath, his spirit, into the soil. And what do you get? The human being, the creation of the human being. And similarly, in the moment of Pentecost, we're told Jesus breathes on the disciples. It's the same breath, the same spirit. So just as soil becomes a human being and these disciples locked in their upper room because of fear, they become a, a church that explodes out onto the streets of the world in mission. So they are transformed by that, that breath. And we're saying to God, do what you have done before. Breathe upon these gifts of bread and wine to make them much more than bread and wine. Transform these gifts by the power of your spirit as you've done before into the body and blood of Jesus Christ crucified and risen. Make him here and now, not once upon a time. And we make that prayer in faith that God will do now, here and now, what God has done before. Can you take a prayerful posture? Sit with your back straight, with open palms on your lap, close your eyes, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. Breathe out. A reading from the book of Luke, chapter 24. As the disciples came near the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they held him back, saying, Stay with us. The day is almost over and it's getting dark. So he went in to stay with them. He sat down to eat with them, took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke the bread and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized Jesus, but he disappeared from their sight. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. The very same disciples who were downcast and frightened because they were wondering what happened to Jesus after his death now suddenly recognized his, him in the stranger and the clue for that is that the stranger took bread, blessed it, broke it and shared it with them. Then their eyes were opened. What is the meaning of this phrase, their eyes were opened? Were their eyes really opened? If their eyes were really opened, how is it that the Bible says that Jesus vanished from their sight and they could see him no more? Would it be that since the Bible says their eyes were opened, means that though they could not see Jesus with their human eyes, they knew in their hearts he was there. What kind of seeing is this? Spend a few quiet moments telling Jesus to give you the grace to see him with your hearts every time you will go for Mass after your first Holy Communion. Without His grace, all that you will see will be the priests and the other people. But with His grace, you will be see Jesus, the risen Lord, at every Mass. Feel His presence and be satisfied with having supper with Him. 
children, you could say a little prayer to Jesus. Well, children, we can recall the story, the famous story of Prakash. Prakash had packed his vase with offerings, pebbles to represent his good deeds. But his offerings were not able to bring him happiness through an encounter with God. We need to explain why offering of bread and wine as well as gifts for the poor are more appropriate. The offering of bread and wine and the offering for poor. Such sacrifice teaches us and helps us to recognize the risen Lord every day. children for your activity you need to write to Prakash describing what happens to the bread wine and the offering for the poor and how such a sacrifice done the way Jesus has taught us enables us to recognize the risen Lord even today make sure to send it to us today or during the week latest by Thursday and for your assignment, what have you learned from this lesson? I repeat, what have you learned from this lesson? Children, this is my last session for the year. I hope you all enjoyed all my sessions and it was interesting. Well, children, now looking forward to meeting you all in person and having our classes together till your communion day. Thank you, children.